step and repeat all night. You couldn't think, let's put Aiden plastic surgery up there? No, I couldn't! You couldn't do anything to the event? What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 14, Episode 7, Gifts and Receipts. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's jump right into it. So the highlight of this episode came towards the very end, and it was Margaret going to Dolores and straight up exposing Jackie for being a fake ass bitch. And Jackie is just moving so weird this season in general. So like, and it's interesting because I'm actually like rewatching some of the old reunions for New Jersey, just like in my pastime as I'm working from home, like having it play and whatnot. And it's like, Jackie was so bothered by those rumors that Teresa brought to the show about Evan allegedly cheating, yada, yada, yada. She was so bothered by it, but now she's like, oh, it's no big deal. And I like that Melissa's kind of holding Jackie's feet to the fire. And she's like, no, you said that that experience caused you to like, Melissa says to relapse, but it caused Jackie to regress with her eating disorder. She started to like, lose some of the progress that she's been making over the years. And it's because of the stress and drama that came with Teresa. And I've said it once, I've said it twice, I've said it even three times, more times. The only reason why Jackie is a friend of is because she cited the show as like having a negative impact on her eating disorder. You know what I mean? And like, because everybody have talked about their eating disorders, but Jackie's the only one who's been like, oh no, like the stress brought on by this negative experience on the show caused me to like, lose some of that progress I've made. And I truly believe that's the only reason why Jackie is a friend of. But like, yeah, so Margaret, and I don't know, you know, I am not mad at what Margaret's doing, especially with how Jackie's moving with her. Some people are kind of like, oh, well, if like, if Margaret were so real and so straight up, she would have told Dolores right off the bat. But it's like, you know, Margaret was like hearing Jackie out and which I'm kind of surprised it's like okay if Jackie is like so like standoffish with Margaret and like not on good terms why are you venting to Margaret you know what I mean like not even Melissa but like to Margaret so it's like that's kind of weird but it's like you know she's hearing her out but now it's like okay bitch you want to fucking act all fucking fake and pop off on me here I'll show Dolores what you're fucking doing Jackie is fake. She's like trying to talk to Dolores all hunky dory. And it's like, you're calling her a slob, saying you hate her. Like, you're not only saying, oh, you know, I'm kind of taking issue with this. You're like talking shit about her. So yeah, that was kind of odd. Um, so yeah, how do you feel about the whole Margaret Jackie situation? I don't think that Margaret is in the wrong too much. Now granted, I think this is kind of like leading to the final like demise of their friendship, you know what I mean? But we've been kind of heading in this direction anyways. But starting from the top of the episode, we kick off with a continuation of the Fudas meeting up with Teresa and Louie. Uh, Rachel and John are storming out and you know, Teresa and Louie are back there talking shit. And Louie is literally purple. Like, you know, you're talking about him being red and all that shit, but like, he is literally purple. Um, he didn't say a single fucking word. He just sat back, let Teresa fight his battle for him like a pussy. And, you know, as they're walking out, Rachel's like, you know, why are we even taking this housewarming gift for the Gorgas? Like, let's get behind. They don't want this shit. Kind of like the same thing of, like, um, Kim Richards giving back the bunny to Lisa Rinna. It's kind of like, I don't want this negative energy. Fuck that shit. So leave it behind. Uh, Dolores then has Gabby and her mother over for their weekly brunch together. And, you know, as they're chit-chatting, eventually Frank's upcoming proposal comes up. It turns out that they're gonna, um, they're gonna change a plan. Frank was initially gonna do it while they're on vacation in, like, Costa Rica or whatever. But now he's just gonna do it at, like, the new home that they got together. So they're kind of working on that. And once that comes up, they kind of segue to, like, so Dolores, what's happening with you and Polly? And Dolores tells him that Paul wants to go into business with her. And she says some shit about like, a man introducing you into his business is like the equivalent of him introducing you to his kids. It's like, like she's trying to convince herself and them that this is like, good, this is what Paul wants, this is what he's ready to do. And it's like, 
on the one hand, people can argue, oh, you know, why are they asking about, like, Dolores getting married? But it's because that's what Dolores wants. She wants to get taken care of. She wants to put her fucking wall down. She's talked about it a bit in the past. And it's like, she chooses these, like, emotionally distant dudes. And it's like, I don't fucking get it, man. I like it, but... I don't know. And it's like, she's trying to convince herself. We see a little sneak peek for the next episode as well. Which, by the way, will finally feature Danielle and Rachel. Not Danielle, Rachel. Danielle and Jennifer Aiden going head to head. And it's like, I already know that the physical altercation is going to be like at the very end of the episode. Like, to be continued. But I'm still like, oh my gosh. By the way, Jennifer Aiden was just like, she was getting on my nerves in this episode. Talk about that in a little bit. But it's like, do you not, like, she's, like, complaining about Danielle being elitist, and it's like, bitch, do you not know who you are, or, like, what kind of vibes you've been given off since you've been on the show, you know what I mean? Like, especially when she first came on, like, there were conversations about, like, she's so gaudy, and, like, blah, 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 it's like, okay, Jennifer, but anyways, focusing on Dolores, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, we're gonna business together, that's kind of level of commitment he's ready for. But, you know, the prospect of this business is also kind of vague. It's like, okay, I'll go into, like, the... It's like a electrician kind of vibe. It's like, what's Dolores going to do? Be, like, the office manager? What, like... It's very much Polly just doesn't want to get a divorce. And he's just trying to give Dolores something. So that's what he's doing this with. And it's like... I don't know. It's so odd. He's also been separated from his wife for, like, 12 years. Like, it's been quite a while. So what the fuck is going on, dude? Like, is it an insurance thing? Like, does he, like, want to keep her on his, like, health insurance? Is it, like, a tax thing? Do they have businesses together already? Like, what is it? Why are you not making that final step? I, like, don't get it. But anyways, that's where Dolores is at right now. She's like, hey, this is what Paul's ready to do. I'll fucking take it, whatever. But her mother does say, hey... You have a right to know your future. You've been with him for two years. You moved in with him. Like, you have a right to know if you guys are going to wind up, like, getting married. Which is fair. You know what I mean? We also check in with Teresa and her family at home. She's, like, making meatballs. We've seen some cute scenes of um, Teresa interacting with Louis' older son who has autism. So, like, um, in the actual, like, in Teresa's home, you know, Louis lives there. And his younger son, Louis Jr., lives there. The older son, I believe he, like, lives with his mother usually, but he, like, drops in with them fairly often. He's, I don't know what the exact situation is. I know he's not there, like, full time, is what I'm kind of trying to say. Um, so, yeah, she's, like, cooking for him. They have uh, a barber come to the house, give him a haircut to, like, you know, not, like, overwhelm him. So, it's kind of like, you know, we see that kind of family side with her. But, of course, she and Louie are still shit-talking John and all that shit, and... We see two family scenes with Teresa in this episode. Both times they shit talk the Fudas and the Gorgas, like one in one. And it's just like, dude. Like, I can't fully enjoy the sweet family scene when you're fucking talking shit at the side of your neck. Like, oh my goodness. But um, yeah, we'll see Rachel. She helped her younger daughter with her motor skills. We learned that, um, so we've already heard that she has like a little tongue tie they're gonna be working on, but she's also like, a bit delayed with like her milestones and whatnot. So they're kind of working with her and such. Um, in the confessional, Rachel says that like, oh, seeing Teresa reminds me of what I never want to be like. I never want to be like that woman. And kind of similar to like the Teresa situation. It's like, you know, you have this heartwarming family scene that's like muddied with this fucking shit talking. Though Rachel shit talking wasn't as like, rage fueled as Teresa and Louis is, but you know, that's just that. Like, Teresa and Louis also have a habit of like, talking about John and his like, body, his like, appearance, like, very, very strange. Although, you know, of course, talk about Louis being like, purple and red and shit, but like, I don't know, they say some mean shit about John Fuda, is what I'm fucking saying. Um, everyone then gears up for the Gorga's house ring party, it's actually lemoncello themed. Super fucking cute. And there's some nervousness about how things will go with Margaret and Jackie. Also, both of the Aidens will be there, so they're kind of like, how are things gonna go with Joe Gorga? Jennifer's really unsure about how to feel about seeing Joe Gorga in person, and it's like, I really wish they would dive into the full story about their situation. 
because apparently the tension between them, which is already like pretty significant, was heightened because of some altercation at BravoCon, but we haven't talked about it yet. So I'm like, I feel like we need to like get that context of what exactly happened. Apparently he was just like confronting her or some bullshit, but yeah, Jennifer's kind of like, I don't know how to feel about this. Um, she's going to like his housewarming, it's his turf. And she adds that Teresa asked her to just not bring her up, just don't say her name, yada, yada, yada. Jennifer also talks to Bill about some of the awkwardness between her and Danielle regarding the Lena situation. And Jennifer says that she doesn't like how Danielle was like, oh, who the fuck is she to be in VIP with us? And she had her booted out, especially after Lena like did Danielle's hair or some shit. And she feels like Danielle is very elitist and entitled. And again, it's kind of like fair message wrong messenger. Like, I'm sorry, Jennifer Aiden, like, in this same episode, she winds up saying some shit like, oh, at my parties, we do this. Oh, at my parties, we do... It's like, that's her whole fucking shtick. Now I can talk shit about someone else being entitled and shit. You're fucking entitled. Like, oh my goodness. And Jennifer actually says that she loves Danielle's ambition, but she can't treat people like shit on her way to the top. And it's like, Oh, so you love that she's like this alleged social climber, clout chaser. I like Danielle, what she brings to the show, but you know, I'm not totally dismissing these allegations. You know what I mean? Especially like she was on an MTV show back in the day. I think she also tried to audition for another reality show or some shit. Like she's very much hat like, but you know, that's not something to like really hate on, I don't think. It's just something to take note of, you know what I mean? I'm not calling her a clout chaser or anything, but I'm not dismissing that either, if that makes sense. But anyways, people then begin arriving to the housewarming party. Rachel tells Melissa about her sit down with Teresa and whatnot. And of course she includes that like, Louis didn't say a single word the entire time. They brought this housewarming gift, though Rachel left it behind. And right when Melissa's like, oh, I'm so glad you didn't bring that. We don't want that, like that negative energy. You know, we don't need that. Dolores walks in and Polly's holding their gift, but Dolores is holding the bottle that Teresa wanted to give the Gorgas. So she wanted to bring in it and it's just like, dude, really? And Dolores is like, hey, she asked you to bring it, so I'm bringing it, do what you want with it. I'm just helping her out. So there's that. Oh, uh, we then flash to Teresa at home with her family. Again, nice little scene. Though she's shit talking Danielle and the Gorgas in this scene. Cause she actually says that Danielle is cozying up to some people who she's not fond of, AKA Melissa. So, you know, who the fuck knows? She also goes shit at the Fudas as well. It's just like, enjoy your family scenes. Why are you talking shit in your family scenes? But you know, whatever. Dolores then goes to Joe Gorgan, presents the bottle to him. And things immediately go left. He's like, oh, do you think she really cares about me? She's bringing that? Or because Dolores says some shit like, oh, I know that your father liked this, you know, brand of alcohol. And he's like, do you think that my father would appreciate what she's doing with her weight? Like, it like goes left immediately. Melissa intervenes and she's like, look, I'll take the bottle. I'll put it with our 17,000 other bottles. You know, it's whatever. Joe, here's the card. You can read it if you want and he winds up just tossing it into the fire. At this point, the Aidens arrive, and as they're pulling up, we hear Jennifer say, I have valet parking at my parties. And it's like, what were you just fucking saying about being entitled and like all that shit, bitch? Like, oh my God. Um, Jackie also rolls in. And again, we see Rachel talking to multiple ladies at this point, and she's recounting her sit down with Teresa. And as Rachel winds up like getting heated during the conversation, Jackie's like, oh, I've never seen someone like have so much hate for Teresa. Like she makes some like fucking snide comment about that. Jackie then accuses Melissa and Margaret of being in Rachel's ear. Basically like, oh, Rachel, do you really think that you're gonna move on with Teresa? They're your best friends, like they're in your ear. And it's like just regurgitating like Teresa-esque arguments. It's like, oh my God. And Rachel's like, if that were true, I wouldn't have even met up with them. Like, that's not fucking true. And you know, Jackie's like, I question if you guys even really wanted to move on. And it's like, well, Jackie, if you had fucking known how the sit down went, you know that Louie didn't say a single fucking word. 
And granted, you know, John Fuda was very like, oh, you know, I don't like, he like, this apology isn't genuine, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, like, did the Fudas handle it perfectly? No, but why are you acting like, oh, you guys didn't want to move on? I don't think Teresa and Louie want to move on. Like, what, girl? So, I don't know, Jackie's being fucking annoying. We all see John Fuda talk about the meetup uh, on the side with the guys. And he actually brings up how Teresa is calling him this fucking drug lord of Bergen County when he was some 17-year-old selling weed. And he notes that, like, oh, a couple years ago, Jackie made that example regarding, oh, Gia doing coke in the bathroom at parties. I was younger than Gia was at that time. And you're trying to use that against me. Like, he mentions that allegation, which I don't think was appropriate, but I see what he's trying to say. I don't know, I, th I just didn't think that like, so is as good of an argument as he thinks. Cause it's like, okay, well you really did get caught up for that shit when you were 17. Gia was like accused of the, not really accused of it, but like was used in an example of this when, you know, there is no evidence or anything about that. So it's kind of like, I don't know about that. Dolores, little shitster Dolores, she goes up to Margaret and she tells her, oh, Jackie's over there accusing Rachel of having you and Melissa in her ear. And this sets off a confrontation. And once Margaret calls Jackie out, Jackie doubles down on her comment. And in support of this, she mentions how at the brunch, Melissa was like trying to cause an issue between Jackie and Teresa by being like, oh, Jackie, you were so upset about the rumors that Teresa said about you. And Melissa's right there and she's like, well, Jackie, like, I'm not making shit up. Like, you said that, like, Teresa and the stress caused by her allegations, her rumors that she, like, brought to the show, that caused you to, like, regress in your eating disorder. And Melissa leaves it at that. She's like, look, I'm not gonna fucking go back and forth with you over this shit. Like... I know what you said, you know what you said, the audience knows what's up, that's it. So she walks off and she leaves Jackie and Margaret to like, basically discuss the state of their friendship. It's the same old shit, basically. Jackie then says that Margaret is upset about her friendship with Teresa before Jackie says, look, this is a waste of my fucking time. And she storms off. Margaret then calls Jackie a see you next Tuesday. And she tells Dolores, who's right next to her, She's like, oh, Jackie was complaining about you not tagging her in that picture we took at the baseball game. I had to talk her off the ledge from that. And Dolores is like, that was a complete accident. Oh my gosh. And Margaret's like, yeah, just so you know, she was talking mad shit about you about that. And it's like, ooh, now it's beginning. But Margaret then sees Jackie go up to Joe Benigno and Jackie says like, oh, I love you. And Joe's like, oh, I love you too. And like hug or some shit. Like, right after Jackie and Margaret get into it, and Margaret's like, don't hug my husband. She fucking walks over there and basically tells Joe to pay Jackie Dutch. She's like, you know, we're not in a good space right now. Don't fucking do that shit. And it's like, Joe Benigno has to go home with Margaret. He's not a fucking idiot. He knows what's up. But, um, so yeah, we see that. Danielle then confronts Jennifer, and she's like, hey, what's up with us? Like, I feel like something's off. Jennifer then kind of says her piece and she says that she just doesn't like how Danielle handled the Lena issue. And Danielle explains like the VIP section was like supposed to be just for them, like to be away from like the fans and shit. And it was just a security issue. So that's all it was. It wasn't this fucking personal attack, all that bullshit. She also adds that Lena wanted to bring Laura, Margaret's ex-best friend who like was stirring up all this drama last season. Lena wanted to bring her. Now, we didn't know that beforehand. So it's like, now we know why Jennifer is so upset with Danielle. And it doesn't end there because Jennifer then tells Danielle that she should have been more considerate, especially since she, Teresa, and Dolores, like, did so much to help out. And Danielle's like, well, how so? And Jennifer's like, well, you had a step and repeat. You couldn't think to put aid in plastic surgery on your step and repeat. And we already know Jennifer is a greedy bitch. Uh, fucking seasons ago, she got genuinely mad at the group for going to a random jeweler rather than her brother, who's a jeweler out in Queens or some shit. They went to some other jeweler for something for Teresa, and it's like, 
we like what the fuck jennifer like she was so upset about it jennifer wants all that fucking i don't know dude and i kind of get it it's like you know i feel like i was doing a lot to help you out but it's like it's a charity event like i don't know dude it's very kind of odd there's like, some very heated back and forth between them and jennifer kind of shits on danielle a bit she's like oh when i do a charity event all the money goes to the charity i don't like pay myself back and danielle's like i don't either like it's very heated. Danielle did a very good job of, like, keeping her cool, though. She winds up, like, reeling things back in. And she's like, look, I tried to do my first charity event. I tried to do something good for the community. If I dropped a ball on something, I'm sorry. And she's like, you know, but you have to, like, not let this shit fester. If there's an issue, you have to come to me with that issue. So... They kind of squash it right there, but Jennifer was getting nasty. We then see Jennifer and Joe Gorga interact, though we don't really see anything substantial between them. We also see Jennifer turn to Dolores for some comfort. She's like, oh, Dolores, why does Margaret go so low with me? Like, kind of turning her for some support. And Dolores takes the opportunity to be like, hey, well, Margaret mentioned that you took issue with me not tagging you in something. And Jackie confirms this. She's like, oh, yeah, like, I was just like, is Dolores upset at me? Like, what's going on? And Dolores is like, that's ridiculous, Jackie. If you have an issue, come to me with that issue. She kind of nips that in the bud. And Jackie says, oh, but just know I wasn't talking shit or anything. I was just like, what happened? Why is Dolores not tagging me? I wasn't talking shit, though. And Margaret, from across the room, she sees what's going on. And she sends Dolores a screenshot of her conversation with Jackie. And she tells Joe Benigno, oh, tell her to check her phone. He's like, check your phone! Like, waving it up in the air. Dolores gets the signal, puts on her fucking librarian glasses, and reads what's up. And we see Jackie question if the omission was intentional before seeing her write, she's a fucking slob, and I hate her. You weren't talking shit about Dolores, Jackie? You called her a fucking slob! Like, what the fuck? And Dolores calls Jackie's comment disgusting. And, you know, Jackie winds up apologizing and she tries to cover her ass. Like, she accuses Margaret of saying awful things about Dolores and Paul, though she doesn't put anything in writing. And Dolores is like, well, she must be very smart then. She must be smarter than you then, huh? And it's like, Jackie, what the, like... What kind of fucking move is that? You're caught up talking shit about Dolores. You're like, she's talking shit about you too. I don't have any proof. Like, what is she supposed to do with that? It's like, so fucking pathetic. And Dolores goes in on Jackie as Margaret trash talks her. She says that Jackie is like a, an insecure psychotic because she really loved and tried to be there for her, but she's just here spiraling. Jackie, she's trying to kiss Dolores' ass and she's like, I need a moment, like, oh my gosh. In a confessional, she's like, where I come from, calling someone a slob is a nasty thing to say. And she's like, oh, the girl who's always here fucking crying about something is calling me a slob? Like, what the fuck? And it's like, oh my god, but yeah, like, Jackie fucked up. And it's like, why is Jackie even... So you're complaining about Margaret not being there for you, but then you're gonna fucking send her this ammunition, like... I don't know, dude. But yeah, that's it for this episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. Bye.